I don't know what your topic is tonight, but I just. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? Guess. Don't play with me. Guess these nuts. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel where we get you on the grind and improve your mind. In this video, we're going to talk about a more serious subject. We're going to talk about the life and what you can learn from Kevin Samuels. I think we're going to call it uh, the reality of truth, what you can learn from Kevin Samuels. So basically, uh, who was Kevin Samuels and why are we talking about him on this channel? The reason for that is because in the YouTube uh, community, I guess you could say, the YouTube uh, algorithm and many people who watch it, he was a very, uh, he was very popular. He had over 1 million subs. He changed a lot of people's lives. And on this channel, we want to talk about the good and what you can learn from people who do, who try to do good or at least have had some sort of impact on the world and how it has impacted the minds of many and the lives of many. And based on our research and what we know, this guy, Kevin Samuels on, on YouTube, uh, when he was alive, he helped a lot of people. Um, I, I saw many older videos of people saying, thank you, Kevin Samuels, I got married because of you. There was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good that came out of it, but, you know, with his passing, which he recently passed away lately, uh, it has been confirmed. We didn't want to do a video until we actually knew the facts because there's a lot of fake news going on around on YouTube. There's this other guy named Coach Redpill, apparently, and he apparently died, but it turns out those were all fake, so we wanted to make sure that this was real before we did a video on it. So we do know who Kevin Samuels is, but some of our audience probably does not. So we're going to give you a little brief history of what we do know. He was an image consultant on, you know, in real life, and he was known for that. And I guess something happened. He was a very knowledgeable guy. He seemed to have a high IQ. He seemed to know he, what he was talking about. He spread a lot of facts. And he started talking about, I guess, the, the black community, I think. I'm not entirely sure uh, how it started. But he started basically getting women to come on to his, he created a show on his YouTube, YouTube channel and it blew up really quick. He had a, a video that we'll, we'll edit in. It was called the Average at Best video. So he basically, a woman came on and she was trying to ask for help, I guess, about her life. And she said, how come I can't find a man who is equal or better to my level? And Kevin Sam was just like, because you're, you know, in a, in a way he was like, you're average at best. And what that did was spark a lot of controversy and it got a lot of people interested in his content and what he was saying, what he was doing. And due to that, he started gaining a rapid amount of popularity. He went from like a hundred, uh, well, you know, he went from like 50,000 subs and he went up to like, you know, a million plus subs very quickly. So with this newfound fame, he started basically, you know, really kicking into overdrive this brand that he was doing. So he would have a bunch of women come on to his show that we're going to edit some clips in for you guys to get you a really, to get you a sense of what, who he was and what he did. You know, sometimes he did it with some humor. So, uh, he would get women on and he would try to help them by telling them the raw truth. You married? No. Do you want to be married? Yes, I do. Do you want children? Yes, I do. Do you think your husband will be a, a musician, an actor, or an athlete? Yes, I absolutely do. What? Yeah, I I know for a fact. Mm -hmm. That's the man that I be with. So. How old are you? I'm 30. No. Yes. Those are the kind of men I attract. I be around. My resume kind of speaks for itself. Of <laughs> dicks, yeah. Uh, yeah, you do too. But um, yeah, your your cock care, your 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 roster <laughs> yes. of, of dicks is is nice, but you got no wedding rings. No, but they got NBA rings. So. Cause you're a side chick. I'm not though. This dude proposed to me before, so uh -huh. yeah. before or after the orgasm. We never even did anything for real. For real. I just you know, but that was it. Mm. Now was this? We, and, and all joking aside. Mm -hmm. but, was this when you were in college or was it? No, it was well after college, sweetie. I, last year, kind of like last and year. And did he play professional sports or like Canadian basketball? He was a drug dealer, but then he went to the NBA. And, okay. On the and bench. if you turned him down, why? Because he got 12 kids and 16 baby mamas and I didn't want to marry that for real. You for can't make this shit up. You that. can't make this shit up. So why in the hell would you you deserve what you get that's why we laugh at women like you i don't see what i funny. ask you if you want to be married do you want to have kids and when i ask you is do you think your husband's going to be in this group of men 
who tend to live this lifestyle, you say yes, and that's what you openly pick for. Yeah. Instead of going over and dating men over on the business side, because here's the problem. You can't handle a man over here because you got to be more than just cute. Well, I bring way more to the table than that, so. Well, then why are you, why are you putting yourself in a group of men who you say do these things? Well, I mean, because I in L.A., that's just what they, it is, so. Excuse me? Why? The dating scene, the, the dating scene is only NFL, NBA, music, and actors. That's the entire <laughs> dating scene. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. If you want somebody successful, otherwise you're gonna get an actor or somebody who want to be a rapper. And I make money, so I can't play. Well, I swear to God, I didn't. I didn't pay her. I swear to God, I didn't pay her. What he would do is, uh, he would have these. He would have like women, or even sometimes men. They would come on and like they would have conversations, and they would talk about. Uh, they would eventually end up talking about stuff like uh, the dating marketplace and stuff like that and trying to figure out why, you know, certain things are not working out the way that they feel like they should be. And he looks at them, he, he listens to what they have to say, and then usually what happens is he'll see the problem because they'll, they'll pretty much tell him the, what the issue is. And then he'll just say it blatantly with no, like, remorse, and he'll tell them what the truth is. Sometimes, and especially the women, they hear this truth, but they feel like they, they can't, they can't process that truth and they feel like they're being attacked. And sometimes that's what comes out with a lot of these uh, videos where, uh, you know, especially when they, when people will clip the video and then they'll put it out and then it'll be like, pretty much, I'll, I'll try to edit in one right here. I want somebody that's loyal. It's really hard to find loyalty nowadays. You really can't find it at the next corner or none of that. Like these men Loyal, now, lo Hold on, hold on. Loyal to what end? Like a husband? What are you talking about? I want a husband. I want to get married. What do you do for a living? Um, I get EDD. Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean... I don't know what that is. Unemployment. An unemployed mother of three with three baby daddies. And you talking about you can't find a man? Yes. Hmm. It's some, I'm pretty sure God... I want somebody that's going to help me. Like, you don't think that I could it's get called, that? It's called Jesus. You don't think that I can get somebody to help me? You don't mm -hmm. think a man is going to love me? It's called Jesus. He will listen to them, and then he'll tell him. They'll tell them how it is, and tell them the reality of what they're going through and what their mindset mm -hmm. has given them. And sometimes people just can't handle it. He was able to make people critically think about what they were doing. What happens when you talk about reality and the way things are and the truth about things with certain in individuals that can't handle it? You get hate. You get resentment. You get jealousy, you get a lot of negative personality traits, a lot of dark triad traits that come out because many people simply cannot handle the truth and they're very insecure about themselves. So when Kevin Samuels would come on a video and he would tell a woman, you're average at best, or he would tell a woman, because his, his main gig was telling women how it is, not really telling you how it is, because everybody tells men, everybody tells men, including us, to get better and you need to control your emotions and be a little bit better. Kevin Samuels would have women on live with him and he would tell them, you know you might be fat. You know you might not be the best you can be. And, you know, men go after looks, and we do. We're very visual. And you're, you're a beach ball, right? He would tell them, he would he literally say these things. And what, what this would do, it would trigger them. Because no man has ever really, I mean, think about it. No man has ever told a woman that you're not good enough. Most women get simped on every day. If a, when a woman posts a bikini picture, all she gets, oh my god, you're so beautiful. Even the big women, even the plus size, big boned, well, we'll get into that. But even when a, when a bigger girl posts a photo, all the comments down below, like, oh, my God, you're so hot. Oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Oh, my God. So when a guy like Kevin Samuels comes on the Internet and he says, you have work to do. You're fat. You're fat! Guys don't like that. Women will lose their mind because they've never been told that before. Men get told that, get told that all the time because what, men are supposed to be able to handle the truth. It is how we're hardwired. But a lot of women cannot handle that. So what do they do? They build resentment and, they, you know, they, they try to troll him and they try to talk shit and they try to go all... You know, they go crazy over this stuff. But it's also feeds into the audience which he has created. Because a lot of people never get to... It's like a silent majority kind of thing. And many people will never tell a woman. Because most likely they're trying to get laid. And they're not going to tell a woman. Anyway, when a guy comes on the internet and tells a woman, you know, you, you suck basically. And you're not even that good enough to have a man. Then everyone loses their mind because no one ever says that. So he basically went against the mainstream and told people how it is. And when you tell women the truth especially... They're going to retaliate, they're not going to handle it very well, and they're going to hate on you, which we're going to get to soon. 
because when he when he died, a lot of people were being very very hateful towards that, and you know that's not really a way to to respect the dead like that. And he can't defend himself anymore. So luckily, you know there he, there's a lot of heroes out there. A lot of people are defending him, which is pretty cool. It's really cool to see a lot of people come together. But when you tell people the truth, they just they can't handle it because remember we live in a very we talk about this on our videos all the time. We live in a very emotional centric society. A lot of people are really fed into their emotions rather than the logical brain that they are gifted with but they choose not to use because they are weak. We live in a very weak society. Our government, our the world as we know it, is in a very weak state right now. And a lot of people, when you tell them how it is, tell them the truth, tell them the way things are, they're not gonna they're either not gonna accept it, they're just gonna hate you for it, and they're gonna do whatever it takes to try to bring you down, which many people did try to bring him down. But he kept going until the day of his death anyway. So a lot of people just simply can't handle truth. And that's why it's important to the people that do have the courage to speak their mind. Those are the people that are going to get respected the most. They're going to create a lot of villains and a lot of people that are trying to take them down. But they're going to, but they're going to create more love and they're going to create more respect out of that. Even when like he had, even when we found out that he passed, like, like it was mostly like on Twitter where people were like, oh, uh, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. But like there was no like real evidence yet like there wasn't a lot of like news sources or anything saying anything and it wasn't posted like none of his family would had posted anything to his twitter which i don't or any social media which i still don't think they have i think it was yesterday as of recording this video that news outlets were putting it out there on their on their news websites and and whatever and so they were talking about him but they were also a lot of them were also labeling him as uh, misogynistic which of course it clearly uh, when a when a man is standing up against you know well, not standing up against but standing up for themselves when a woman is is attacking them, and when someone like Cameron Samuels is uh, speaking the truth mm -hmm. of of the situation of the reality that this person is in and they're being attacked by it, of course that Kevin Samuels would be labeled as such because a man who is telling a woman that they're not good enough because that they can clearly see the flaws. That they have and, and trying to show and help them find the things that they need to improve upon but the women don't see it as that they see it as an attack they feel like they are you know, that this person that they're talking to is is a misogynist and that hates women but clearly kevin samuels does n did not hate women at all he wanted to help everyone and he wanted to do the th he wanted to show the truth to everybody and show what can be done to better each and every person. Yeah, I don't think he was a misogynist at all. At all. I think no. that he did love women. You know, the, the thing that he did, he simply spoke his mind and told him what it was. And he tried to base a lot of his stuff on scientific arguments, scientific facts, studies, different things that we can apply to the real world, evolutionary psychology maybe. A lot of different things that he would use to clarify his points. He would try to back it up with a lot of data. And it made a lot of people very uncomfortable because they simply couldn't handle it. I don't think he was a misogynist, though. I do think he loved women. I think he... I don't know if he was banging a bunch of girls. I think he did have a, have a kid. I'm not sure. You know, but I think he, he was just trying to... Of course, he made a good profit off it. Of course, we know that, yeah. He had a brand. He was going to stick to that brand. And it's what made his life good. It's what put him out there. But I think there was a reason behind the screen. There was a reason for his doings. And he wanted to do it for a reason. I always try to look at the good in things and try to be optimistic about things rather than the bad, which is why we're doing this video, because we try to look at what certain people can do to help you become better, what you can learn from certain things. I think everything is a lesson. I think everything happens for a reason. And all of this is meant to happen in some sort of way. It's sort of just fate. It just happened, and now we have to deal with it because that's what men do, right? We take things that happen, and we try to find out how to navigate it. Another lesson you can take away from Kevin Samuels is, this is very unexpected, right? As with most deaths that do happen, they're it's very unexpected. It's true that life can end at any moment. So a lot of you guys, right, a lot of people out there, you've been wearing masks for two years because you're thinking, because you're scared of air, and you're thinking that some virus is going to kill you. But in reality, right, anything can kill you at any moment. In fact, most of you are actually killing yourselves right now by eating that freaking bagel with cream cheese or butter that you're eating in the morning every single time. You're killing yourself by eating the Starbucks, vanilla, bullshit, sugar drinks every day. You're actually contributing to your death with your unhealthy nutrition. You're not sleeping right. You're not doing all these things, things that Kevin Samuels would have said that you're doing anyway, right? A lot of you are overweight, which is true. And we've said that in previous videos. A lot of you hate yourselves, which is why you're coming at this dead man because you're not happy with yourself and you feel like you have to, oh, well, he got what he deserved. Like, no, that's not how it goes. A lot of you simply hate yourselves, and you're gonna re and you're not you're just gonna deflect on everything you feel anyway. But the truth is that life can end at any moment. Now the question is, what are you gonna do? 
with your life as it is now? Are you going to keep going the road you're going? If you watch, if you binge watch a lot of Kevin Samuels content, you'll see some hidden gems of truth in a lot of his videos and a lot of things that he said that could actually help you further yourself. So a lot of you are on stagnant, a lot of you are living on dead time, you're wasting time, you're not utilizing your life the way you should. That's a lot of the stuff that he would say in his videos. It's very true. A lot of you guys simply waste your life doing useless stuff. You know, you eat yourselves to death. A lot of you, you know, the world, you know, studies have proven that literally the world is obese right now. The world is like very extremely overweight, especially in America, right? Things are not going well. He simply just aired to that fact. And because of that, he also got a lot of love due to that fact. But you guys don't realize that all this, you know, living in fear is not a good way to live because you could literally die at any moment. Literally, no one expected Kevin Samuels to die. He was like 56 years old, I believe, and he suffered like a heart attack or ca cardiac arrest or something. This could happen to many of you at any single moment. You can argue, okay, well, maybe, did he get the poke? What was the dynamic between death? Between death? It doesn't matter because any of you could also die for any reason. You can go into a car right now and be a passenger. You get hit by a bus or something. You really don't know. The real question is, what are you going to do with the time you have left? It's not about fearing death, it's about being prepared and utilizing the time you have while you have it now. You think Kevin Samuels knew he was going to die? No. But he did live a pretty good life, and he did make a great impact. He did what many of you fail to do. You changed the world. A lot of you are consumers. Kevin Samuels was also a producer. He was making content, trying to help people out. Maybe he, was even, maybe he wasn't even trying to help people out, but he still did. The evidence is overwhelming. There's a lot of video. You could look at videos on the internet. We will probably edit one in. People saying, thank you, Kevin Samuels. You changed my life. Thank you. I found my wife or my husband because of you. So there's a lot of good that came from his content. And, you know, he left a legacy behind. And he all he has all of his videos left behind for you guys to all watch. So, you know, the real question is, what are you going to do with your time on Earth? And how much time do you really have left? The answer is we don't know. But you can do different things to make your impact known before you pass away because you really don't know how much time you have left. Time is the fire in which we all burn. We know this. Many people choose to deny that fact. They completely forget, oh, well, life is unlimited. I can do whatever I want. No, I could wake up tomorrow and this could be my last video. It is very true. It is a very realistic possibility. I could leave this house and literally something horrible could happen. A car, drunk driver could hit me. You just never know. That's why we try to make an impact with every single video we do, whether it be good or bad or funny or whatever. But the truth is you really don't know what you have left and you have to utilize your time. So you need to stop wasting time, get off the couch and make something of yourself now, which is a good point that he made and it's absolutely true. So here we're gonna put up some screenshots of a lot of people being extremely disrespectful to the dead. A lot of people are ex just, a lot of people are showing their true colors as they have been in the past couple of years. This is not with just Kevin Samuels, but a lot of people over the past couple of years, look, I hope he gets Corona and dies. I hope that, you know, I hope that because they're not wearing a mask. Like a lot of you guys are really extremely hateful and the internet literally brings out the worst of humans. It brings out the best, don't get me wrong. But any moron with a keyboard can now type his thoughts and feelings. And now we're starting to discover that a lot of people live hateful lives. They live a hateful, you know, they hate themselves and they hate the world and they're going to put others down to make themselves try to feel better. Because in the end, if you type a hateful comment, what do you really have in your real life? You're going to, you're going to finish typing that hateful comment and you're going to get your ceiling and you're like, damn, I'm still broke. Damn, I'm still fat as fuck. What am I going to do about it? You know? So a lot of these people are very, you, we're gonna, you know, you could see it that it's very hateful comments. Very disrespectful. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure if Kevin's, you know, family or brothers or sisters or whatever saw it, they would, you know, they'd punch you right in the mouth, you know? Yeah, exactly. But all you guys need to be punched in the face, honestly. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll probably just go through some of these uh, tweets. Now, there, I, we uh, took some screenshots from Twitter, because that's pretty much where all this stuff pretty much came about. Where, Twitter is Corona. Yeah, which is, yeah. Uh, no one really likes Twitter, but anyway. But the thing is, is that we got a whole bunch of tweets, both bad and good, and we're going to talk about them. So... The first one, and I'll have them all up on the screen so you guys can read along with us. So the first one is from Ernest Owens. I think this is the one that pretty much blew everything up where, because uh, he said something. Uh, actually, it's a whole entire thread, so if you find it on Twitter, definitely go read it. So the pretty much the beginning tweet was, Kevin Samuels has made a career off of shamelessly disgracing black women for profit. They do that to themselves if you look at all those twerking videos, actually. So. Uh, he, em he emboldened the most toxic individuals to project tired and harmful narratives about black women. Dead or alive, what a disgraceful life to live. That's all I've got for that misogynist. See, stuff like that makes me just lose hope for humanity. This guy's obviously very hateful. He's uh, obviously a huge simp. 
I, I disagree with that. It's just being extremely, you know, rude. Like, you think he'd go up to, like, Kevin Samuel's family and say that to their face? No, he'll just get, he'll get, like, shot up in there. Like, he, like, this is, you don't, you don't say those kind of things. It's just, he, he wasn't, a, we already went over, like, he was not a misogynist. You know, I think he was doing some good. You know, I don't think it's necessary to do, to agree with everything he said. I'm sure there was some flaws and we could have arguments, but it's not about that because, first of all, he can't even defend himself. So there's that. Second of all, you're just being extremely rude by saying that. And, uh, this guy... Probably gets yelled at by his wife every day, you know, so Poppy's, you know, his wife probably made him write that. So there's always that huge simp. Yeah. Uh, it's just very disrespectful, not cool. Yeah, so we'll go to the next one. So Kevin Samuels is twice divorced, single at 56, and no children. Yeah, he called black women leftovers and said they would die lonely. Now look who just died lonely with no kids, wife, girlfriends, not even male friends. What well, a shame. I, what we, a nasty legacy to live behind. I think that's also false because if you look at YouTube, there's a lot of people right now that are saying, you know, he was my friend, rest in peace. There's a lot of people being, being very respectful. And so that's that's false. He had a lot of friends, I think. And he did go to places and he did have a lot of friends in real life because a lot of you don't even live in real life. You live in your alter ego internet life and that's even worse. He was divorced, yes, which is probably where he gained a lot of his life experience from in the divorce machine. It can be very brutal to men, so there's always that. I'm sure Kevin Samuels was not perfect, no. No one really is anyway. All of your idols on YouTube that you look up to, none of them are perfect. Everybody has some skeletons in their closet. Everybody has their past and things that made them who, who they are. Is he twice divorced? Yes. But did he also make an impact on the world? Yes. And that's what this video is about. Here is another one, Dr. Sunrise. Uh, black women talk about black men's toxic behavior all the time, but if you dare speak the truth about their toxic behavior, you'll be shamed into silence. No one is allowed to criticize black women for their toxic behavior, not even black women themselves. Kevin Samuels proved it. Well, there you go. I mean, see, there's someone who sort of gets it. I mean, you know, I think men and women can both be toxic, right? Yeah. But a lot of men are just afraid to call out women's bullshit. And then when they do, they get hate on for it. So a lot of, you know, a lot of women and a lot of men, they disrespect themselves. They put themselves out there and they just talk negative on themselves. Well, you have all these girls just making fool fools out of themselves. You know, so we all do it. <laughs> There's another one, God Tier. I think that's God Tier Hoochie or Nucci. And it says, Ke Kevin Dead Samuels made a career out of mocking black women and having a circle jerk with other sad, pathetic, fatherless, desperate men. And y'all want me to check notes, mourn his death? Nah. And someone says, is this you? And then you see, I think that actually might be a picture of her, maybe. So, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that that's chick, I'm happy. A lot of stuff. you guys, that, that's a lot of you guys just freaking eating yourselves to death, talking crap about a dead guy. Sham is God. All Kevin Samuels did was tell broke men and overweight women to be realistic, and y'all out here acting like he was Scar from Lion King. Y'all weird. <laughs> You know, that's what happens when you tell the truth. A lot of things, you know, people are just going to hate on you for it, and they're going to they're gonna label you such terms as misogynist, you know. You know, say what you want, but he still made an more of an impact than you, so whatever. I can't, you can't really hate on another man for his success. I mean, I, I think it's very important to be very uh, appreciative and supportive of when a man becomes successful, you know, as long as it's within the right of reason, you know. He, uh, you know, made a good living, and good as to him. When you're hateful in someone's success, you're very, you're just insecure about yourself, you know. A, a true person with an emotional stability, they're going to be happy for their successes and wish them well. Then they're going to get back to work and work, work on themselves and become a little bit better. Hate usually comes from beneath you. So a lot of these people hating on him simply are, are hating on themselves in a way. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Women. Kevin Samuels degraded women. He's a misogynist. Rest in piss. Angry face emoji. Rapper. Uh, this bitch a hoe. Met her at the stove. <laughs> you know how it go. Women. Twerks. Yeah, guys. This is, I mean, you can't hate on one man for telling it how it is. Literally, if you look around, you're going to see all the evidence of a lot of the things that Kevin Samuel said anyway. It's true. People just hate looking at reality with a with a non-blind eye, you know, and seeing what's actually going on out there. Maury, so the show Maury. Maury Povich is sitting down with his wife, Connie Chung, enjoying that $100 million in earnings from showcasing black women on national t TV for 30 years as a demographic whom engages in serial unprotected sex and has no idea whom the father to the child is, but Kevin Samuels was the problem. Yeah, guys, <laughs> that's pretty funny, but it's true. Like, yeah. shows like Maury, like, oh, you know, you are not the father. Oh, my God. There is a lot of crazy, realist, but realistic stuff that's going on out there behind the scenes that a lot of you guys are really ignorant of. This stuff happens all the time. Literally, there was a, there was this actor of, of Grey's Anatomy, it was some, some TV show, and he recently made an Instagram story. This is true. Saying that uh, my wife has become pregnant from another man, it's not my baby, and he's gonna take some time off. So, like, this stuff, like, literally happens all the time. 
So, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there. So it's very important to really look at the stuff he was saying compared to the person that was saying it. Because a lot of it's true. So there, we just thought it'd be interesting to share some tweets about some people's perspective. If you go on Twitter, even YouTube or the internet in general, you're going to see a lot of hateful, you know, you could look at it, you could look at it yourself. There's a lot of hateful stuff going down the line of people hating on a dead guy. That's not here to defend himself. So there's that. A lot of people are being very hateful and spiteful towards this guy. It's very unfortunate, you know. A lot of people talk a lot of crap on the internet, which is natural, I guess. If I was Elon Musk, I'd be saying, well, that's what free speech is all about. Well, fine, I can't argue with that. It's still frowned upon. It's still important to call out bad behavior when you see it. Should they be canceled? No. But it's very unfortunate the way a lot of people are filled with hate in their hearts and a lot, you know, and how they come out and they say a lot of these things. It's because of me. That's why we're doing a video today to sort of, you know, Take what you can learn from all this stuff because it's very important to realize what world we're in now. If everyone somehow, some way, were able to and adopt a more positive style mindset, I feel like a lot of the hate that we have for each other and, and for specific things will be minimized as much as possible. Granted, you can't, you can't fully extinguish hate, but you can minimize it to a, a digestible size. And if we can all learn to you know be civil with each other, regardless of race, culture, gender, you know, religion, everything like that, we could all be a more positive human race and be able to, you know, not have, we can criticize each other. We can definitely criticize each other, but not, not do it in a hateful way. We can, we can <clears throat> give positive criticisms and more, more reinforced criticisms based upon facts and data instead of saying, you know, hateful things like you're wrong because I hate you and stuff like that. We uh, using more rational ideas and not not emotional. We encourage a lot of you guys who watch this and watch our channel to make a legacy of your own. Now we're going to end this video with the topic of legacy, right? So Kevin Samuels went out leaving a legacy behind him full of vi uh, many videos, many live streams that people could call and talk to him, right? So he made the best impact. He did what he wanted to do. He wanted, he did end up changing the world in some capacity. Had over a million subs, died quite successful. I'm sure if he came back to life and said his thoughts, I'm sure he would have said the last few days were, were great. All right, so he made a legacy out of himself. So he's gone. So we, you can cry and mourn all you want, but, but this is just part of life. Death is a natural part of life. You have to, we have to accept it, especially as men. We have to carry on with our lives. We have to keep going. You know, I'm sure maybe he'll, and maybe Kevin Samuels inspired some of you to start a YouTube channel, which is pretty cool. He didn't inspire us. We're just doing this video because we know about him. We know, we know of him and we thought it'd be a good tribute to do and a good lesson of it. But the question comes down to you, the viewer. What are you going to do with the knowledge you have now, with, with what you have now? Are you going to go out there and you're going to make something of yourself? Are you going to make a brand? Are you going to improve the life of yourself and maybe the others around you? Are you going to become a positive light? To those around you, or you just gotta sit down, be angry, type some shit in the keyboard, go to work, hate yourself, get fat, die. Are you gonna do that? Or are you gonna take the other route? I think it's better to make something of yourself, create your own legacy. Try not to be who Kevin Sanders was, but but take some of the inspiration that you got from him, if you did, and then make something of yourself. Take some of that energy, put it into your own work, and then make yourself a little bit better. And don't be afraid to tell people the truth and how it really is. Because when you do, you will make enemies, yes, I admittedly that is true, but you're going to make a lot of friends and like-minded people along the way, which is important to always be yourself and be true to who you are. And don't be afraid to back down to the system or society, whatever anyone says. Do what you got to do, especially as a man. Move forward and continue on. Make the dead proud, I would say, is a good uh, ending to that. So yeah. what legacy are you guys going to live and what are you going to do with the information you have? If I'm sure if you're a fan, fan of Kevin Samuels, you know, the best advice is to take what you've learned you know, don't try to be Kevin Samuels. Just try to take what you've learned from him and try to impact it into yourself. Take the life lessons you've learned and made it and make it into your own. Try to make something of yourself while you can because you don't know how much time you have left. So, if you guys have any thoughts about Kevin Samuels or, or, or what how he impacted you or what you learned from this video or what you learned from him, type it in the comments. You know, have a good discussion. Hopefully not a hateful discussion of what you learned. And, you know, so let us know in the comments. Like the video if you have not already. So it would be really helpful if you guys subscribe to our channel. Help us grow a little bit. And you could also donate to our Cash App link in the description if you appreciate our work. And we're going to see you guys in the next video. Gentlemen, if no one's told you, you got to tell yourself. You are special. You are important. You are the man.